Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Hey, it is Pox again. So today I have a uh, Death's Oath character to show you guys. First off, I want to say happy holidays. I actually just got back from vacation, um, so I'm happy to be back again. Um, and also, one big thing to note about Death's Oath, this, this league specifically, is it has had major buffs, not directly to Death's Oath itself, but more so to the fact that there's a new stat on the tree called non-ailment chaos damage over time multiplier now the character i'm going to show you is a life-based death oath but i believe if you don't have a budget it's pretty much almost always better to go ci instead of going life however life is a lot easier to get started and should deal more damage and has literally almost no cost investment so for this simple showcase i'm going to show you guys um, this is a five or well technically a four off color death's oath. So we're actually missing conch effect uh, So the colors we're using and you pretty much can't change these so feel free to change whatever you want But the results are not going to be very good Void manipulation arcane surge efficacy swift affliction less duration and then you would use conch effect here You can use ink aoe instead of like efficacy um, but you can't really change them uh, if you are unaware I've got tons of death's oath video guides from before basically if you don't use arcane surge you lose access to the uh, Duration tag so you kind of have to use arcane surge to enable the use of duration support gems So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick at Zuri run then we're, or well, first I'm gonna show you guys over here then I'm gonna show you guys a uh, map and then an add Zuby. so let's get started So all we're really going to be using to get this character going is a Death's Rush, a Death's Oath, and a Cane of Unraveling. And that's pretty much it. Um, oh, I just realized, hold on, this is, there we go. I was not on the right uh, mouse hotkeys. Actually, I need to change them. I actually kind of want that gas, but I don't feel like going back for it. Re Profile... One? Is that what I want to be on? So just to show what those following uniques are, this is the Cane of Unraveling that we use. Um, again, a uh, crafted weapon is always going to be better than these standard uniques. However, this is a very solid unique. It gives plus two to our Blight, but mainly it gives the 51% to non-ailment chaos damage overtime multiplier, which does directly affect your Death's Oath. If you look here, we're 12.3k. If we remove it, we are 8.7k. Um, you can use whatever combination you want. Like I said, this is just kind of getting budget. And then Death's Rush is a ring that gives us armor, which is cool because we're you know using a Death's Oath. So we've got armor scaling, life, chaos res. More Chaos Res, but mainly also we get Onslaught for free, and being as this is our map clear character, we're trying to go zoom, zoom, zoom. Uh, I could get a ton more movement speed, but there's no point because you need to move as fast as you can kill. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. That's not correct. How about this one? Okay, that that's good. Now, my other links I'm using, I've got Temp Chains, Enfeeble, Blasphemy, and Despair. Um... The reason why I have that going is simply because it's a life-based character. And whereas I can get higher life, we can probably get to like, if we change our tree a little bit, you could probably push 7.5k, 8k if you're in trade league. But I would say don't aim to get past probably 6.5k with like, you know, like crazy investment. Because we've got like 1, 2, 3 almost like four or five that's like 600 life so that puts us to almost 6k getting to 7k would be basically delve crafting our gear and then past that is just going to be insane gear uh, i don't have really that good of gear to be honest nothing is crafted with like chaos damage opposed to the es variant which needs like much more damage on their like basically everywhere you can see my gear is pretty much just like resistance in life it's that's really about it just resin life nothing crazy Okay, so let me go into a map. Now, I can run red maps. The reason why I'm not doing this on a red map isn't necessarily because of, like, the damage. The damage is totally okay. Oh, actually, I just did Azuri by accident. It's more so because uh, I'm scared of red syndicates because 
they just like even even with a ridiculous temp temp chain and enfeeble um they can just like off-screen snipe me before the enfeeble even applies and it's like kind of off-putting so <laughs> in the kits i'm still not very big of a fan even though i'm playing softcore now So with Cane of Unraveling, we do get access to Vol Blight. So I'm currently using Swift Affliction, Void Manipulation, Control Destruction, Blight, Empower, and Efficacy. It's only a level two Empower, so it's not it's not super good, but it's still good. I do also need to uh, set up an arcane surge on our um, flame dash so that I can get arcane surge, which is going to give us a cast speed multiplier along with, or sorry, cast speed increase along with spell damage multiplier and mono regen. Of this and some searching eye jewels for my other character. Oh, the obscured is actually really good for this since uh, obscured gives us access to Breachstone. And then is it Chimera? I forgot. Someone who makes them empowered. Empowered Breachstones are OP OP. If I die to a flame blast, please don't make fun of me, chat. It's the morning and I haven't had my coffee yet. Instead, I'm drinking some OJ to wake up, so you know, I'm doing this for you. That was a little scary. Okay, so the reason why it seems like our single target is like really up and down is because I don't have much cast speed. Um, if you guys don't know how Blight works, Blight basically can have 20 layers of damage, and we can only apply 4 layers a second. 
Uh, of course, if we have Onslaught up, which is only from our Death's Rush, so if we killed recently, we can do a bit more damage. Um, that's why the damage ramp up is really, really, really good. So hitting Vol Blight basically insta kills everything. Um, but yeah, if you're looking to get more single target for like Shaper or Elder, and maybe even Uber Elder, definitely try to get more cast speed, mono regen, and just spec three points into duration on the tree here. How are you on map? Is this 50%? No. Okay, next up, Plateau. I do have to pick these maps up there. Alva? Oh baby. Chasm? Chasm? Sacrifice unique? I'm down. So I need to hit the strong box chamber which is at top right wing. Top left, sorry. Good job, Exo. Tremor rod. Those are all pretty garbage. Actually, the bottom one I think is okay. So, one of the big downsides to a life based Death's Oath character. Whoa! To a life based Death's Oath character, number one is on death effects slash effects that hit you that curses don't work on. Because then you don't get your Enfeeble, and you don't get like your 60 or 70% curse effect quality in Feeble. And you do not get your Malediction damage reduction. Um, so whereas in ES Death's Oath, we could have 10k ES. Well, maybe, you know, with my current gear investment, maybe like 7 or 8k. Uh, but you'd be more susceptible to surviving those things that aren't affected from curses. Let's do bottom side. And ES would also get access to stun immunity, so you can change your ascendancy. Not ascendancy, sorry. You can change your pantheon, since I'm using Brine King right now. You could also, um, you also get a ton of sustain while mapping. You're pretty much gonna be on like 30% ES regen per second, uh, because of, not Wicked Ward, but the other, Vile Bastion. And then you get Whip Wicked Ward for uh, like boss sustain. So definitely if you plan on playing Death's Oath like long term, if you feel like you're too squishy or if you feel like red maps aren't doing the best for you, definitely think about the respec into ES Death's Oath. And then you're probably going to use a crafted one-handed weapon with the damage over time ailment since it's new. If you don't feel like crafting a weapon, I'm sure you could just use a Breath of the Council. Oh, here we go. I forgot that these are totem bosses. So this might, this is probably a, this is a bad boss to like show this on, but it's a good boss to show it on because it's a bad boss. So basically totems cannot be, oh God, I don't have remove shock, do I? Oh god. Totems cannot be cursed, which is kind of why uh, Popro is uh, a pain in the ass. Let me just pop this. See, with, with an ES Death's Oath, I basically could just like hit Vol Discipline and just stand there and go Omega Lol, but can't really do that with this character. 
Since the totem, since the curses don't work on it, he basically does like full damage to me, which is really scary. So definitely stay away from the totem bosses. They're not nice. Wait, what's over here? This should be a dead end, no? Oh, Cindershed. No thanks, Fortification. You know why? Because the doors can't be cursed either. Thanks, Gigi. Ye okay, that's pretty much the character. Works very well for low-level delving as well, since you pretty much just run at the speed of your run. And, yeah. Um, tree looks pretty standard actually it looks even similar to the es death's oath uh basically you're gonna branch through spell damage um and then i essentially just booked it all the way to the right and grabbed like shadow clusters and then up into atrophy move across grab influence once you're actually running um once you're actually running death's oath you can actually come down here and grab like method of madness instead but Actually, I thought this was better, but I don't really think you need it um, because this is a multiplier. Only thing is this does not affect your Blight, but this affects your Death's Oath, even though this affects both, but I'm trying to get more life on the character. Um, I don't really have much else to run. I was trying to fit in like Aspect of the Spider, but that's just not going to happen unless I like come down here and grab like Charisma and then grab like these two, but that's just too much work really. If I'm going to do all that, I might as well just respect the Energy Shield. So the next couple points are pretty much just levels, like, like, they're all just life, and then, yeah, you can also use Spreading Rots, Spreading Rots are really nice for, uh, single target damage if you're having trouble. But more or less, that's pretty much the character. Uh, if you want my recommendation on how to color your Death's Oath, uh, the first thing to do is go to your crafting bench, type in Socket. You want to do two socket on your death's oath and then after you two socket it you want to do a green and blue um right here for 15 chromes so then you get green and blue then what you're going to do is you're going to do three socket you're going to put your death's oath you're going to click the three socket and you're going to roll the third socket until it becomes either so you're basically going to do three socket and if it's red then you click two socket it wipes the red you click three socket again it goes red you wipe it you go back to two socket and you're going to do that until you get green or blue um then for the fourth socket you're going to do the same thing but you're going to get the other color so if you got basically blue here then you would want green here and then for your fifth socket fifth is the most pain in the ass to do because it's a lot more expensive on the jewelers um so you have two options either a you can just force it and just use all of your jewelers to try to get this as your last color ideally you want three blue two green and one red if you can't get it and you're just getting really annoyed and triggered and pissed off, you know, maybe you're just bored of doing the exact same thing. There is another method, but it's complete RNG, may not do anything for you. If you get Verici in research, he doesn't have to be the leader. As long as you have him in research and you have him three star, what Verici does is he adds one to three white sockets on your gear and it does not corrupt it. The problem is, is you can only do it one time because let me give you an example. I used it on my piece of gear here and it ended up rolling on my blue socket and made it white. So it does nothing in this example. If I were to have, for example, gotten it on a green socket, well, basically let's not use green, let's use red. If I got it on the red socket, for example, it would have saved me all of the recoloring needed for this socket and then I could just make this red and I could use this for whatever I wanted. But because it went on a blue, it kind of fucks me over a little bit in this pot. Now, <clears throat> to, to basically use the Verici method again, you cannot have any white sockets on your gear, which means I would have to chrome and or I would have to go backwards in my links and remove this one and then redo it and get the color again. So it's kind of a pain in the ass. I could still technically do that, but it is a pain in the ass, so I don't think I'm gonna do that. But anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I uh, hope you guys are having fun with the Death's Oath character. Uh, if you guys didn't know what I've been playing for this league as well, I have a 
War Chief Totem Resident Sleeper character that I'm actually having a lot of fun with. It's basically my bossing character. Uh, he's got his Bringer of the Rain on with a Skirmish. We're trying to get a Lycosade so I can respec RT and go Elemental Overload. And then I want to drop Bringer when I can get a Lore Weave. And then, I don't know, maybe use a Died Bell or just like a Life Super Tanky Helmet. But that's pretty much about it. Like I said, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Uh, I'm going to drink my OJ. I'll see you boys all later.